Good evening, everyone, and a special, special thanks to Shireen and CNBC18 for really putting the focus and the spotlight on women. I think in a room full of uh, gender-aligned human beings, <laughs> I'm extremely happy to be able to share this thought because we need the power of multiplication for the situation we have on hand. Let me begin by saying that the entire experience as the, uh, the head or the chair of G20 Empower has been fantastic so far. I've been able to experience the depth of the problem, the multitude of solutions, uh, the various initiatives being taken by the Indian government and the appreciation across the world of what India is doing as part of G20 presidency. I'm here really to share very quickly some of those thoughts and then to seek your support and alignment to take these further. How do we multiply? We saw one women's industrial park, and thank you, Telangana, thank you, Jayesh Karu, thank you, Katie Ramarao, who really pushed this when it was kind of floundering, and thank you, women, for standing there and saying we will make it happen, not for our own sakes, but for others. So this is what G20 Empower is really all about. It's not for women who are in this room. It's about women who are not in the room. It's not for women standing on this stage or who could have been on this stage. It's for women who have not made it to the stage, but we can enable them here. And it's about parity, because if we look at it on the education side, women are close to 95% uh, in the secondary school education. We're at about 60% in terms of economic activity, whether it's acknowledged or not, and about 20% in terms of political representation, and yet, and yet it is estimated that it will take 151 years before we really reach parity on all levels. And it is for us to say, at G20 Empower and all of you, to come out there and say that we will not wait. Because that's what women in rural areas are saying, that's what women in schools are saying, that's what women who are driving buses or who are flying airplanes are saying. So let's say it together, let's accelerate, echo and empower each other. So we are looking at few initiatives. I'm going to quickly go through them because I'm going to seek your help in each and every one of them. One of the first initiatives is really we're creating a playbook. This playbook compiles positive activities which are happening across the globe so that one can inspire the other. One can teach one government what another government could be doing. So please contribute to the playbook. Deepti, I'd love to hear from you. Jayesh Karu, more from your ministry. All of you women here, please, contributions to the playbook. The second very, very significant initiative is that we're sharing inspirational stories because women need to hear about other women succeed and men need to hear about other women succeeding. So let's get ahead on that one. The third important one is that we are calling for advocates. And thank you to the advocates in this room. So your organizations, your bank, your companies, please sign up as advocates so that your power to, your, your very powerful statement that we will stop at nothing but parity. Maybe we'll make that the line for G20 Empower for the world. Uh, we need all of you to sign up as advocates so that we see men and women of large organizations represent and say that equity is important. The next critical aspect we're looking at is tech equity. Because as much as our women are moving towards equity, technology is moving faster. And the male adoption of technology is moving even faster. So while in terms of the education level, 43% of women are engineers or graduates in STEM, however, only 23% of them are in the workplace. I think Shireen spoke about the leaky pipeline. How do we ensure that every woman is tech enabled? It doesn't mean you have to be an engineer or work in Accenture or Microsoft. But what we need is every woman to be digitally empowered. We are launching in 120 languages a digital inclusion platform to train women of six different personas. So whether you're an eight standard past or you're a PhD, you will find a persona and you will be able to educate yourself in technology. So please come on to this platform, educate yourselves, share it with your staff, share it with others, share it with your secretary, find ways to people to enhance their lives, especially women. The next one, and I think one of our speakers said that the most, is what do women need? 
beyond financial inclusion, but I will come to that. We're not going to let HSBC off. Uh, but beyond financial inclusion, what we, beyond uh, education or technology, uh, beyond a job, what women very often need is a friend, is a support, is someone to say where to go, what to do, how to get where they want to go. So we're launching a mentorship platform. Fiki has done this earlier through MicroMentor, now in partnership with Niti Aayog and 20 countries. This is a global mentorship platform. So my first request to everyone in this room, every woman in this room, everyone is listening, please sign up to be a mentor. Help the women who cannot be in this room. And thank you for raising your hand. Please, all of you, sign up. I need 10,000 women afloat. I need every viewer of CNBC. I need everyone from your organizations to come up and say, I will be a mentor and help another woman just learn a few things more so that they can live a better life. There's a mentorship training plot. Uh, program, there's a matchmaking, there's group mentorship, all these will be launched. Uh, July 1st is the soft launch in August during the final summit. So uh, please be part of these initiatives, they are very, very powerful. And finally, I think uh, G20 Empower was born uh, in Japan, focusing on women in the private sector. So I request all the corporates, all the private sector individuals to please create role models, come forward as advocates, because it is your message that has the power to transform. You drive the economy, you create a showcase, you support women in SME. And in addition, very, very critically, uh, it is very, very well documented that out of 100 people, 100 men who try and seek a loan, 60 of them will get a loan, and out of 100 women who seek a loan, only 23 will get that loan. We need banks to do something. It is said that there was, during our COVID, uh, the crisis backstop loan funding was there for SMEs. The lack of female participation in the economic world is a crisis. Please, let's do something large and dynamic. So these are the various things we're pushing at G20. Uh, I really want to thank Shireen, and I request her to come up here because I think we need to uh, really celebrate women who are raising the voice and the stature of women. So all of you, please give Shireen a big hand. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this initiative and for everything that you're you doing, please continue to raise uh, the voice even after the presidency of, uh, of uh, G20 Empower. Let's continue on this crusade because once this bug has bitten us, uh, health will always remain my primary passion, but fighting for women is now my equal passion. Thank you, Shireen.